So Yarko, Yarko, you have uh, your is uh, Yarko. You're the bass player for uh, Corpaclani. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And have I pronounced your name correctly? Is it Corpaclani? Uh, yes. Yes. And your name is Yarko Altonin. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Sounds like a uh, to me on the in America. It sounds like a character from Dune. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I'm familiar with the uh, science fiction uh, movie Dune. Um, no. You mean the? Oh, okay. You mean the old whatever book that was like already in the seventies or whatever, sixties. It was a book. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, do you, are you a reader of science fiction, or you're a reader much at all? Uh, I read a lot, but I actually nowadays I mostly read like um, history and biographies and that kind of stuff. I haven't I haven't read uh, like a fictional novel in a long, long time. Uh, is history a passion of yours? Yeah. Yeah, some parts of it. I'm not like, like not not all history, but yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, era? Yeah, twentieth century in Europe. Ah. And uh, what have, what uh, what era of that twentieth century have you been fixated on lately? Nah, not uh, uh, currently. I have. I don't know. I think. Most of the stuff of that that thing is written already, but I did find one more book about the uh, Finnish Finnish nineteen twenties and nineteen thirties, but I haven't actually opened it yet. I was uh, now I'm calling from uh, Northern California. I'm uh, currently in uh, the Bay Area. You've uh, you played uh, this area of America before, right? Yeah, we have been we have been pretty much everywhere. And I think you were in uh, Sacramento not that long ago. Is that right? Uh, that is true. Yeah, in a very small club. Yeah, a very small club up the stairs. Yes, yes. Not the, not be... the not the greatest of the venues of, on that tour. No, but I think that's uh, you know you know how it is. You don't get you don't get to choose where you play. You just have to play, right? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Well, first of all, the new album is amazing. You must be uh, very proud of yourself. Yeah, we are actually like I am personally, and we are we are quite happy how the album album turned out. Like we've had this thing like many times that um, that we have been. Uh, we keep on thinking that God damn it, this is the best album we have done, and already like for the for the past few albums, we've also been at least some of us have also been a bit worried, like like what do we do next? How do we make how do we make better album? Because we this is the this is like the top that we can we, we can reach, and then two th three years later we managed to beat the previous one, so we are quite happy with that so far at least. Yeah, you often, often hear you often you 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 often hear that from bands that say this is the best album that we've ever done, and uh, the well, reality you, is, you, you have to say that would be um, you are basically like forced to say that that because it would be stupid to say that yeah we are releasing a new album and it's crap, right? Or it's not as good as our last one. Please buy it anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll promise you a better one next time. <laughs> Now, yeah, talk a little bit about me. But I can still, I can still like look back to uh, back into our old old albums, and I can see. I still think that we have made a better album every time that we have released an album. It's always been better than the previous one. So so far, I haven't lied about that. Do you have a favorite of the previous? You mean the albums or the Correct. songs? Uh, um, what uh, the previous album? Do you have a favorite from uh, from before? 
I like to, I, I'm, I still think that I'm, I, I'd go in the order. Like, I, I think that the best album is the previous album, and the second best is the one before that, and so on. Of course, there may be like minor, minor things that I, I would now think that like every album has these things that you look at them or listen to them years later and you realize that, my God, we would have done this so much better if we did these songs now. But, but then again, that was that time and this is this time. No, no reason to go back there that much. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, talk a little bit about making the new album and what was your vision going into this one? Um, that is a good question. What was the vision? We don't. We have. We have always like when we do uh, do the albums. We have a. Uh, we have a bunch of songs that then, you know, sort of form the album, and I don't think there ever has been that much of a vision like pre predefined. Uh, way or the idea that this is now we're going to make this kind of an album or now we're going to make that kind of an album because we have it is a like we are working constantly and the and writing songs and we, you know slowly working towards the album and then at some point there is the studio time is closing in and then you have to okay these are the songs that we have let's go and make an album and then that's that's the album you get. It's not like it was. It's not like we are great visionaries of of what we are going to do next or not. And uh, the album clocks in a, a little over an hour. Is that right? Um, I think so. Yeah, actually, it is quite. It is almost exactly like an hour. I think. And uh, it's 13 songs, the longest song. Actually, the uh, if I'm correct here, the uh, Vecore, Vericora, the first and the third, the last song are almost identical in length. Um, I, haven't thought, I, I haven't really paid that much attention to that. Okay, so it's, it's, I know now what you're saying. I have to check it now myself here. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's an yeah but, interesting... but you're right, yeah. It's an interesting way to bookend the album. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't think of it that way. I, and I uh, I certainly with Verico around the opening track, I never really I never really actually um, considered it that it is a long song. I do understand that the last song uh, is sort of an more in this classic heavy metal epic style uh, I, and like a perfect closer in that sense but i never actually never actually realized that vericora is that long as well oh yeah, as because, a, yeah uh, uh, very different different styles yeah as an interviewer it, i try to do what i can to uh, look up certain things and I imagine I come up with, I find things that are probably not true. Uh, you know, there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of a lot of things on the internet uh, where we do our research that are, are maybe fabricated or, um, you know, uh, hyped up, if you will. Yeah, if, yeah, but you have to you have to admit that if it's on the internet, it is always. What have you? Uh, what kind of things have you heard about yourself uh, or and your band that are uh, not true or just completely absurd? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, there, there was at least like at some point, like a few years ago, I remember some <clears throat> someone was surprised that we have mobile phones and internet. I'm mean, like we we come from the country who basically invented the mobile phone, <laughs> uh, and, and then some people are so so. Are you saying that you are not you are not living in some in in the middle of the forest, in some in some cave or something? And we are like, uh, yeah, we are quite sure, we are quite sure that we don't. 
I uh, I found out, you know, I don't know what it's like in Finland, but here in America, uh, some people are prone to what they call conspiracy theories. And uh, one conspiracy theory I came across yesterday is that Finland doesn't actually exist. I've seen that. I've seen that as well. I, I have... Um... I have since I, since reading that I have started to doubt my own doubt my own um, existence. I'm I'm in the middle of an ex existential crisis right now. <laughs> oh man, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, now, how has the writing and recording process changed over the last five years, and what things have changed that you would have preferred stay the same? <laughs> uh, that's annoying questions you have. Um, the the writing process hasn't really really changed in, in that sense that we have we have like Jon writes most of the material then Sami writes some I write some and we've always been we have always worked um, separately we we don't really like get together to write or anything so so nothing there has like technically changed that much except that I'm fairly sure that. Um, each one of us is uh, probably now a better writer than than we were, as you said, five years ago. Um, I mean, I I still think that we are getting better in in what we do. Still at this at this age, we are still learning things. Um, the um, recording wise, like studio wise, I think the major change was that was um when we changed the uh, producer we are quite we, we usually get quite stuck with people who we work with <clears throat> and we did we did first we did several albums with one guy and then we did several albums with the second guy and then then um we finally sort of realized that as as far as we went with him the previous producer we sort of reached um, reach one end or end of, a, of one line and we couldn't really felt that we couldn't really go any further in, in that sense because we were getting more and more like sound wise production wise we were getting more and more modern all the time and we felt after four or whatever how many albums we did with him we uh, sort of felt that we have to find another direction sound wise production wise and we did that for the previous album, we went to uh, made a deliberate change to, let's say, to more organic, old school sound and more, more of an old school production style where you don't really, where you don't take, uh, don't don't have hundred takes on one little thing or whatever, but you just try to capture uh, the um, capture the feeling or the whatever sentiment that you're trying to trying to put into the song even even though maybe your certain note wasn't completely clean or anything i think that's the that's a, the major change in the last five years in that sense and then the third part of your question about uh, <clears throat> what did that what, what is there something that i don't i what was it that i want that didn't change. You would, that you would prefer that remain the sustain. That you would prefer um, would uh, have stayed the same. Yeah, I am actually as a person. I am quite um, happy with um, things that don't change too much. But but then again, um, also I do understand that sometimes the change is only only good. And the probably the only option. Um, I don't think we like when we have what well, what we have done with the band, whether it is the the lineup of the band or the albums that we have done. Like every change that we have we have made has made uh, the band better. So I I, I wouldn't say that I I miss any any of the old things in that sense. Uh, you said that uh, you you recorded in, uh, you, you recorded at a different place and worked with a different person uh, for the new album. Is that right? 
Yeah, at least one on the previous one already. Yeah, we have we 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 changed producer already for the previous album. I see. And uh, what's new in the world of instruments, uh, gear, and effects for uh, for your uh, for you? Uh, there's nothing new. I think. <laughs> I mean, we have been. I mean, we have been uh, doing pretty much the same stuff for the uh, for the last few albums. Maybe the maybe this album, the latest album, maybe has a bit more acoustic guitars in there. We haven't had that on the previous album that much. There's some banjo now, so maybe there are some weird string stringed instruments now that maybe be a bit more but not um nothing major has changed guitar sound we have been trying to vary a bit so that it is bit, um so it doesn't get so boring like to have 60 60 minutes of the same same guitar sound and so on no major changes and uh are you a, a collector of? Uh, do you have a, a vast uh, arsenal of, of instruments? Uh, do you collect music? Are you a collector of motorcycles, or uh, what is it? Do you have a passion of collecting things? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, I collect Black Sabbath, and then I have been I have been buying way too much bass guitars lately. Because I don't know what will I do with all of them, uh, but I only have one motorcycle, so I'm not collecting motorcycles. Oh, okay. You said you are, are, are an avid collector of Black Sabbath stuff. Is that right? Yes. Do you have uh, much from the uh, Ian Gillen era? Uh, <laughs> pretty much everything that there is to collect. And uh, do you uh, have you belonged to fan clubs? Of people, uh, have you belonged to fan clubs in the past? Do you belong to a Black Sabbath fan club by any chance? No, I have never joined any fan clubs, fan clubs in, like officially. And I think I'm not sure if they work, if those things exist anymore, even because everything is online nowadays. Yeah, I, I think the Metallica probably has one, but yeah, I, I think everything's available online now. Uh, what is your most prized Black Sabbath collectible? Um, I there are several things that are quite quite interesting. Um, uh, the of course the very first pressing of the first album, uh, which is rather rare because the very first pressing was so small. Then the then there's a hilarious. Um, split promo single that has status quo on the other side which is also quite rare some maybe like 100 copies exist in the world so and then and then again the 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 original first pressing of the second album paranoid with the incorrect management credit and all that uh, like the mispressing or misprint or whatever all that uh, those are interesting things yeah, uh, to err, what do they say? To err is human. To yeah, err yeah. is human. Yes. And uh, m mistakes definitely humanize things. Yeah, and they, and then again, but the only problem is also these little mistakes make, make 50 years later make things extremely expensive. Absolutely, absolutely. And therein, therein lies the passion of collecting. Yes, and it is. I, I've also there's been some other bands that I've been collecting, and there's actually some bands that it's possible that you actually can seriously like, especially when it's if it's a Finnish band, because then you don't have any like that you have to find the fucking Spanish pressing or Mexican pressing or or American pressing because it's all released only in Finland. So there are actually bands where you can complete your com uh, collection, which is hilarious. With uh, but that you can actually get everything that the band has ever released. But with Black Sabbath, that is, an, that is impossible. There is always something. Yeah, I would imagine the same, <laughs> same would that be... Is, 
yeah, I was going to say that, that, and that is why one of the reasons why it's so good to be in a band that tours around the world, that you go and you get to places, you get to stuck in um, um, Colombia and find Colombian pressings or whatever. Oh, yeah, I was in England uh, a few years ago, and I went to the uh, town, you know, the uh, the Black Sabbath, the uh, first Black Sabbath album cover, and I went to... I, yeah, I've been planning to go there. That's some muddle Durham oh. or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's at the end of a dirt road, uh, and uh, when you get to it, to the left is a church, and to the right is the house, but they uh, it's gated now. So um, you can't just walk through the gate, yeah. and uh, but you can uh, stand in front of the gate like I did and uh, take a selfie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I've it's been, sort of. I've been planning to go every time I've been to I've been to England. I've been actually planning that I should go there. Yeah, we uh, we metalheads and music lovers we have uh, we have meccas worldwide. Yeah. Uh, you that's know, true. Play, we have places where we have to go. Absolutely. Like I, I went to Abbey Road. Uh, I walked across the street, you know, where the Beatles walked across, and uh, I went to the the factories where they uh, the Pink Floyd album. There's all kinds of wonderful okay. things. I, I imagine that when you're on t when you're on tour, you uh, get that opportunity uh, just to visit, uh, like I said, our meccas. Yeah, and the, like the time, like the stupid places as well. That you know that I ha you have to go see the venue where this and this bootleg was recorded or something. Absolutely, that makes, absolutely that makes, makes no sense. You're just standing in front of some crappy venue, but still, <laughs> it's like an important thing for you, and that's the and that's the whole point. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to us, uh, talk to me uh, here at Capital Chaos TV. Uh, we look forward to obviously a resumption of normalcy which includes loud fucking heavy metal um and and all kinds of great music um i have a, one last question um do you have the same fear and mistrust of your government and institutions as many americans uh have of theirs and what is the best sexual position for listening to corporate um uh. That was two questions again. Uh, the, 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 do I have a mistrust to it? I do. I understand. I don't. I uh, I hate our government, but I but, but they are predictable and uh, easy. So it's a bit different than what you just had for four years, which was totally unpredictable. Um, ours is just stupid but predictable. Um, the uh, best sexual position to listen to our music. Hmm. I think it's like the best position for a man to be in general on his back. On his back. I like that. I like that. All right, Yarko. Well, thanks again for talking to me and taking the time out of your evening. Uh, uh, and, no. uh, We will be seeing you soon. Uh, well, hopefully. That's all we can do, my brother. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Well, you have a good day. Cheers.